you know the old um, if you give a man a fish, he eats for a day. If you teach a man a fish, he eats forever. Well, the relationship between giving and teaching is a relation of depth. That if I give you the teaching, I'm giving you something that is deeper than giving you the consequence of the practice. And if I if I teach you how to fish, I'm doing something that is deeper than merely giving you a fish. Well, you can go deeper still. What I could do is I could potentially teach you how to invent fishing. And I can go deeper still. So the recognition is that when you're dealing with the kind of problem that we're dealing with, you have to get very good at being able to go deep because you're always going to be operating on the basis of something. Something is going to be the basis of how you're making sense of what's going on and how you're making choices in that context. So if you're not able to be conscious of that basis, you're not able to be aware of that depth, and then you're not able to enter into that depth enough skillfulness to be able to actually modify and operate at that depth, what you'll end up doing is you'll end up operating, well, frankly, unconsciously. You'll be operating with blind spots. You'll be making assumptions that you don't even necessarily know that you're making. And in this case, we're actually talking about civilization itself. Um, And what I mean by that is effectively everything that human beings have been doing as well, as humans, as opposed to as primates, since pre-agriculture for 15,000 years, possibly even farther back, has to actually be examined deeply. And a lot of the details about particular things that were laid down, choices that were made possibly 75,000 years ago, have to actually be made, brought to light, examined closely as to what those choices actually imply, and then you know, maybe unwound Maybe new things designed to be laid down at that level of depth or possibly kind of brushed off and clarified and put back into a fabric that then becomes the basis of the kind of culture and civilization that we need. Can you give us an example? Let's take physics. So what we typically do when we're trying to do something useful is we go deep enough to have created a foundation upon which we can do the thing that we're trying to do. And then we kind of try to leave that foundation untouched unless it's not working. And so this is the entire essence of what Thomas Kuhn was exploring when he was looking at the structure of scientific revolutions. This is the guy who coined the concept of scientific paradigms, is that a scientific paradigm is a a whole bunch of different kinds of fundamental assumptions, many of which ultimately become unconscious, meaning that we don't even know that we've made them, and are the basis upon which we then go about doing science. So if you assume, for example, that space and time are real and objective, independent of the things that are in them, this is the Newtonian model. The Newtonian model has an assumption that you can talk about something called space and you can talk about something called time even if there is nothing else in the universe, there is still space and time. And then what happens is, is that when you put something in the universe, you know, the classic thing is you imagine a sphere, like a, a billiard ball. You imagine the sphere sort of appearing, and it appears in a space that is somehow already pre-existing. And it appears in a time that is already pre-existing, and then this billiard ball operates in that environment. And so Newtonian physics had that as an assumption. And when we take a look at what general relativity did, it didn't operate in the context of those set of assumptions. What it did is it examined those assumptions themselves. And so when Einstein thought, hmm, what the hell actually is time? What actually is space? He brought into consciousness, he brought into conscious contemplation the nature of the assumptions of the foundations of the physics he was operating in. He then redesigned, he reconsidered those assumptions into a new concept, which is now the space-time manifold. And where you can't actually say space and time without also already including mass. Now, again, this is way outside the context of five-year-olds. But the idea is that we're always operating on the basis of a whole set of unconscious assumptions that give us the tools that we need to have to then think and do at the higher level. Well, what Deep Code has done is Deep Code has said, okay, let's notice that quite often a lot of things that are challenging now are challenging because of the assumptions, of the frameworks and the unconscious expectations that we're operating under, let's go deeper. 
And let's just keep going deeper until we get to something that is, in fact, deep enough for constructing an actual comprehensive civilization. It's like there are layers on, let's say, a sphere. And as the sphere rolls down, it collects more layers. You know, as the civilization progresses, as evolution progresses, it collects more stuff. And then whatever is on the surface is what we're aware of, is the layer that we function in. But then there are all these other foundational layers before it that we don't understand, that we take for granted, or that we assume that, you know, the top layer is all there is. And what you're saying is that we have to dig down deeper to understand what all this stuff rests on, because the stuff that is on the outside right now is no longer sustainable for itself. It's going to collapse onto itself. You've got me thinking about a few things here that are really interesting. I've never thought of the concept of what is space and time without matter in it. Like, what is an empty grid? 